All right, let's move on. Uh, let's move on. Talk about something that is very, very interesting. Well, when um, Seth Blatter was forced to step aside, uh, a lot of people have been declaring their intention to run. First person was Brazil legend Zico. But it came as a surprise now. Somebody uh, from this part uh, of the world, not the African continent, Musa Biliti, has declared his intention um, to run. Let me start with Taylor. Is it something to laugh about, really? Is it, is it something to take serious? Uh, I mean, when Jerome Champagne came, a lot of us, uh, this guy, and um, started hearing names like Figo and, you know, do these guys really stand a chance? Um, we're talking about ability here. Does really, does, it, it doesn't really look strong in calf for me. And now FIFA, I, I don't know. He has his, um, his personal issues with calf, but only with the person of um, Hisa Ayatu, the president of calf. And um, at the moment, at the moment, he, you know, we'll, we'll call him a pretender okay. at this moment. However, it's a good one for Africa. It's about time we begin to raise our hands, you know, amongst, amongst our equals. The truth is, we're not in any way inferior to other, other um, um, continental federations or individuals who choose to, to aspire for the position of president of FIFA. So it's a welcome development for, for him, at least even in the event that he, he does withdraw at any given point in time. It would, it would really show, indicate to other to like Africans profile. that, yes, it would raise his profile. And it also indicates to other African football leaders that come, we need to make a stand. We don't just have to be the ones supporting. We can also aspire for this position. So we it's a welcome development. We on the front side. Yeah, I don't know exactly. if, if Tonte agrees. Is this something we should just laugh off or, or praise him for, you know, you're just showing up? Well, yeah, I think we should praise him, first of all, to, stand with for, to start with for, showing, for turning up and, you know, coming out and say, declaring that he's, he wants to run for the top seat of FIFA. And that's... That, yes, from an African perspective, given the fact that no one has, aside from Isaiah too, has been that bold to come out from Africa, it's, it's, also, it's, a, it's also a good one. However, it's quite laughable, you know, given the, to the large, to the large extent, nobody knows him. The mm -hmm. fact that he's even had issues with, with CAF since as far back as 20, 2012 is little known to a lot of people. He, had, he also declared in 2011 that he was not going to, Vote, he was going to vote against a blatter. He publicly de declared that. So it, 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 it shows, it, it kind of makes him appear, look like a joker, somebody who could not be taken serious. However, he said, he said however, that he's, he's gotten about half a dozen federations to support him. How true that is, he's the only one that can, that okay. can prove. We, we, it's, <laughs> it's a good one. We, we, we'll wait to see. We'll wait to see. All right, let's talk about Calf uh, a little. Um, I'm, I'm hoping we get to see something on this one. Um, Belgium, and that's the news. The Belgian, uh, the Belgian LFA is saying, look, if it's discovered that the bidding process for the 2018 World Cup is fraudulent in any way, they're going to seek conversation. At this stage, you, you think that the, the problem with FIFA is over, but this one comes. Belgium saying, if there's any fraud in it, that makes you feel other countries would, other countries will come up and say, compensate us as well. Um, I'll, I'll quote um, the president of, um, um, the FA, of, the of Sierra Leonean FA, okay. um, Aisha. She said something in regards to the fact that the problems of FIFA would keep mounting more and more. They would keep, they would keep, they would, they would keep coming up more. And this is one indication to that, to the, to that fact. The truth, the truth is there's so, much, there's so much at stake, you know, and the profile of FIFA in itself is, is, is dipped greatly. In fact, we were, we were discussing the, the, the fact that like, FIFA released a movie, United Fashion, and it, it, is, it is rated as the worst performing movie in the United States box office. And that shows the fact that it's not just a law enforcement issue with FIFA. Even American citizens have issues with FIFA. So there's an apathy. There's, there's an apathy generally. So in this event now, regards Bel the Belgian FA seeking compensation, how far that would go, we don't know. But then again, as it only shows how much of a problem FIFA is having at the moment. I have on their hands. Okay, let, let, let's move on and, and talk about something that can make you smile. Let's go about Copa America, and we'll, we'll start with um, Brazil. Um, uh, it's not really been plain and smooth sailing, Tonte, for the big guns, Brazil, um, Argentina, never mind Argentina on four points, defending champions, Uruguay uh, as well, have been struggling. But, but let's start with Brazil, Neymar. Is it because it's Neymar that's getting um, one match um, 
ideally it should be, I, I thought it was going to be more than that. Game you're seeing, Colombia defeating uh, Brazil, and an incident in that game got Neymar into trouble. Yeah, uh, have, to start with, uh, the Neymar, yes, he's gotten one match ban. However, there's, there's still likelihood of his, his uh, yes. punishments being increased or, add, um, or some, a new, some added punishment. At the same time, when you look at Neymar's performance in a game where, he, where the team of Brazil loses, he, sometimes he shows himself not to be a fair player. You know, when you lose, how was your what was the reaction? How do you respond to it? And against against Colombia, he didn't respond too well to it. So, uh, but if you do not take him out of the mix, are we saying that Brazil cannot do well? Because we saw, if you go back to the World Cup last year, we saw Neymar absent from the squad and some and one or two other players. You saw that Brazil fell down to fell to to Germany, which was which will continue to be talked about in history in history okay. of football. So, but Brazil, well, we cannot write we, cannot, we shouldn't we should write them off at this point in time. Also, but, but do you think? Let, let me quickly cut you here before I go to um, tell him. Did, did you think he got off um, because he's Neymar? You know, he's going to get one match, and if if he gets any other thing, it won't count for this tournament. The way it looks, so he's going to get one match. And will, if Brazil qualifies, it's going to get a play. So it's because it's Neymar. Because if it was a lesser known person, I'm just thinking maybe three matches out of the block and nobody's going to say anything. Of course, as in, it, 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 Neymar does get off easily. Mm -hmm. it, not just even at national level, but even at club, even at club football as well. Um, and it's not so good for, for football, particularly okay. when FIFA stars. is fair play. You know, stars, every, get, off stars get off the hook. Every player should be treated equally, okay. regardless of where you are. Uh, let's talk about Argentina. You, you know, your own view. Before we take a look at the pictures, uh, Argentina, I mean, how have they fared? Uh, a narrow victory over Uruguay. Tough, tough game. Uh, I mean, the top guys have not really... Uh, Tata Martino has not been able to find that blend. As much as we talk about that Argentina attack, still, I mean, trying to put Tevez, Di Maria, Aguero, Messi, Pastore, putting all of them into one team has really, really been difficult. Don't so I don't know uh, what you think Argentina can really do. From a tactical point of view, you see that the Argentina team is, is, more, of about, is more of attack, attack, and attack. However, when they, they show that what they, what they, what they, what they, what they demonstrate with that form of um, the last form of tactic is that they do they underestimate or underrate their opponents. See what happened against Paraguay. Paraguay, by the first half, it was it appeared Paraguay was not in that game. Then by halftime, Argentina were leading 2-0. But second half, the Paraguay came in and they were a totally different team. And so what what that tells us is is that the 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 Argentine Argentinian team do not or the core of the bench do not. They, they fail in reading the game and also trying to interpret it or translate it into, into being more, a bit more defensive okay. and also while combining attack with it. All right. Let's take a look at the fixtures um, today, Saturday, and Sunday as we approach um, the uh, final group games, really, as we see the teams that will move to the next one. As you know, Copa America has 12 teams, 10 teams from South America, two teams invited in. So let's look at the fixtures for today, for Saturday, and for Sunday. Interesting ones are in the group that has Brazil, all teams on, on three points. Brazil might, might, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but, um, okay, tell me, would you be brave to say that Brazil might crash out? Of course, <laughs> it is, it is, it is, it won't come as a surprise, given the quality, so to speak, of, um, not, not necessarily the quality of, of their opponent, but, but the determination on the part of their opponent. At the, at the cases, at this moment in time in football history, Brazil and Argentina can no longer be considered as South American powers alone in the, on that continent. Chile, Paraguay, Uruguay have shown it, in, in, but they have to be reckoned with. So, okay. it, so, the, so Brazil crashing out of the tournament wouldn't come as a surprise. All right, um, Tonte, Argentina, fairly comfortable situation, four points, uh, playing against Jamaica. Okay, that's, that's it. Let me run through this. Um, in Group A, Mexico play Ecuador, Chile play Bolivia. Uh, Chile is looking good. Uruguay take on Paraguay. Argentina take on Jamaica. And on Sunday, you have um, Colombia take on Peru. Brazil take on Venezuela. Interesting thing in this one is that any of these three teams, uh, of these four teams in Group C, can still um, qualify. But, but quickly, Tonte, just uh, run through this. Uh, which of the teams, uh, just pick two in each of the groups. Uh, I'll see if Telema agrees with you that you think will qualify. 
Well, I, I, I'll, I'll tip Argentina, you know, to qualify from the group. Um, I just hope that they don't regard Jamaica as an African team like um, Cavani did to, you know, uh, but I'll tip Argentina. I also, it's going to be a, it's a tough call bit for Uruguay, Paraguay, because seeing, seeing what Paraguayans did against Argentina, we really don't want to underestimate or underrate them. Okay. So it's a tough call, really. For All right. Me. And do you agree with the um, assessment? I'll, I'll tip Argentina, they have an easy right, so to speak, for over Jamaica. Then I'll, I'll tip Paraguay over Uruguay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. That's it. Uh, I'm going to keep my mouth shut. Most times I get it wrong with my predictions. All right. Uh, we'll, we're on the own stretch, really. And um, let, let's squeeze in tennis. Uh, we have a minute or two. Let's quickly squeeze in tennis. Um, ten days to go. Uh, I'll allow you to talk about the guys you think that will win uh, quickly. Um, guys you think that would, you know, deliver the goods. Well, for, for the men, Djokovic is still number one. So he's definitely going to be rated as in a top for and good, good to go. Okay. Then we also have um, um, Stan, Stanislas Wawrinka, who is equally good to go. Um, Federer is also in the mix. But then again, I'm looking at Nadal. How would he actually come into okay. this tournament and how would he feature? All right, Tonte, do you think Nadal can do anything considering um, recent um, results? Uh, well, um, it's, well, he did fairly well in the um, um, two, about last week. Um, okay. For the tournament, he did, he did pretty well. But no, this is the Grand Slam we're talking right. about here, right. so anything can happen. Okay. All right, that's how we have to wrap things up on the show this morning. We do hope that you've enjoyed everything we've been able to do. Sports this morning comes your way again next week. Till then, bye-bye now.